All right, so I wanted to do a short video just going over the schematic I'm using to build this amplifier. Uh, I want to do a quick shout out to Slucky. Slucky put together this document uh, and they have a project where they built this amplifier to this document. Uh, their website is Slucky Amps, go check that out. Shout out to Slucky. Uh, also, if this all looks like you know nonsense to you, go check out um, Uncle Doug's series on how tube amps work. Uh, it's a very useful series. Uh, very informative and it will help you make sense of what we're looking at. My favorite reference uh, for tube amps is Fender amplifier. So anytime I point out something that's quote unquote different, uh, that is the template that I am basing that difference off of is Fender amps. Um, so uh, first up, we have a 47K uh, grid resistor here. Typically you'd say C68K. 270 is fairly high uh, on the play resistor. You typically see 220K. Uh, so this is going to let a little bit more high frequency in, not a huge difference, probably wouldn't be able to tell. And 220, 220, 70 plus 220 is gonna be a little more gain out of the stage. However, we do not have a bypass capacitor on this first stage, which you would typically see like a 25 microfarad. Uh, so this stage is going to be, the gain is gonna be frequency dependent because there is no AC bypass around the cathode resistor. Uh, so moving on to the next spot here, uh, we have a 0.1 microfarad coupling cap. Uh, that's a little high. Uh, it's gonna let some more base frequencies in. Typically you'd see more like 22 nano, like 0 0.02 micro, something like that. Um, the one meg volume control is standard. We have a coupling cap here of again, 100 nanofarad, which is usually low. Usually you're gonna see something in the tens of microfarads. Uh, so that's just gonna not uh, bypass as much low frequencies. Another big coupling cap here of 100 nanofarad. Uh, 470 pico, um, 470 pico reverb cap is pretty normal. Fender uses 500. Uh, coming up here next, we have the Fender, or I should say the Ampeg, uh, the famous Ampeg uh, tone stack, which is a James or Baxendall tone stack uh, with this additional resistor here. Uh, I think all these values are straight from the Gemini. And we have a couple of mixing resistors here. Coming down here, we have uh, a little divider network right here. Uh, that's just cutting down on some of the voltage going on to the, into this first stage. Um, let's see, big old coupling cap here, or I should say bypass cap. And these are 75, 27 tubes, so a higher current tube, which is totally normal. Same thing Fender uses. This dwell control, I don't think this is on the re original Ampeg reverb. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I'm glad it's here. I think the dwell controls are great. Uh, that might be a slucky addition though. Uh, another big 100 microfarad bypass cap. Standard three spring long spring tank. Um, another little divider network here. Uh, let's see. Coming over here, more standard value coupling capacitor or actually bypass capacitor. More standard value coupling capacitor, pretty standard 100K reverb potentiometer. So heading over to the power amp, we have, uh, let's see, we have, so we have a little network here of 100 picofarad and 56K. So I believe this is going to, uh, so it's basically like a little uh, break cap, except it's sort of the opposite because it's sending it up to the power rail. So this should be cutting on a little bit of highs. I'll have to double check that, I might correct myself. Um, Coming down here, we have our sort of negative feedback network. Uh, so we have like a combination of 2.8K ohm resistance uh, of negative feedback with a little bypass cap around two thirds of that resistance. Uh, what else? We have a big 100 microfarad cap just for maxing gain out of this stage. Pretty standard 0.02 coupling cap here. Uh, now this phase inverter here, this is called a cathodyne phase inverter. Um, this is not your more standard like Fender, um, like long tail pair where you'll see like, uh, resistor, like resistors like this. And then this is a resistor, resistor here, resistor here, a, a joint resistor there, and then a resistor and then down here to the ground. Uh, we're not doing that. This is a phase inversion with just a single triode. Uh, and the way this works is you have your. Uh, input phase coming down the grid. Uh, coming out of the plate, you have uh, inverse phase. So this is gonna be like that. And coming out of the cathode here, you're going to have your in-phase signal. 
Uh, so you end up with out of phase signals going to your two power tubes for class AB operation. Uh, let's back up here. So nice big 100 nanofarad coupling caps, plenty of base frequencies coming through. 220k grid leaks, which is pretty standard. This is going to be our uh, bias supply coming in here. 1k uh, grid stopper resistors, pretty standard. Found using 1.5k. It's fine. Uh, what else? Uh, these I'm doing one ohm, one ohm, and that's just helped to sense the current going through the tubes for bias adjustment. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out is that the pinout for 7591s is a little different. Uh, specifically, your control grid is on 6 as opposed to 5, which you would find on other uh, tubes like 606, 6v6, EL34, uh, and cathode is on 5, where you normally find that on 8. So not directly swappable, uh, so keep an eye on that. Also worth mentioning that there is no screen resistors here. Uh, I've seen that on most 7591 amps is there's no individual screen resistors. For Fender amps, you would usually see like a, a 470 ohm resistor coming out of the screens, but that's not here. Uh, like I said, I've never seen those on 7591 amps, so if it works, it works. Um, and then the rest of this is all pretty standard. Coming down here to the power supply. Uh, so again, we're not doing, not doing the trim. Uh, this is just coming bion, 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 right here to the bias. So uh, coming down here to the power supply, uh, we have a pretty stout uh, uh, power transformer, high tension here, high tension winding here. Uh, so that's like 860 volt AC across. Um, the uh, It's got to be higher voltage because of the filter choke input here. Um, normally you would see out of an amp, this is going to come down and be a capacitor, a capacitor input uh, to ground. But in this case, we don't have that. We have filter choke input. So this is, there's going to be a lot of voltage dropped here. Um, you know, coming out of the GC34, you'd expect some maybe, I don't know, 860 is going to be somewhere like in the 600-ish volt range approximately. Um, we're going to drop some voltage here. We're going to end up right down here around 475. So you got to have a higher voltage uh, transformer for filter choke, uh, filter choke input. And then I'm doing 32, 32, pretty much the same, it's not a big deal. Uh, and then it's a pretty standard series resistance power supply. Uh, and then buy supply down here, all this is pretty much the same. I use UF5408 uh, and all this is the same. So uh, that is the amplifier we're building. Uh, and I hope this was informative to anybody who's interested in this specific uh, amp we're building. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was informative.